The Bible says, <clears throat> let everything that has breath praise the Lord. As we come this morning for this time of worship, may we all look to the throne of God's presence as we hear the prelude. Welcome to Ann Street United Methodist Church. All who are with us in this service this morning and those who are watching online and listening to us on the radio, we greet you today in the name of the Lord. If you're visiting us today, we're glad to have you with us and we hope that you will come back and join us again. And all who are watching online, you can go to the comments section and send in to the service your prayer request. We are a very active church, and I, and I have just a few announcements, but our first one is Linda Hebner. Thank you, Linda. Good morning, everyone. A series of educational offerings about staying the course in the United Methodist Church will begin next Sunday, September 25th, immediately following worship. Other sessions are scheduled for October 16th 
and November 20th, and we are making arrangements to gather in Fellowship Hall. Through video testimonies, factual documentation, and generous opportunities for questions, a dedicated group of your brothers and sisters here at Ann Street Church can help relieve anxiety and offer accurate information about the potential disaffiliation process and its impacts on every one of us. Each offering will offer different information, so I urge you to attend all three sessions. Above all, we continue to focus on our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ by the sea and throughout God's creation. With open hearts, open minds, and open doors, we are the people of the United Methodist Church. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pastor Taylor has an announcement to make. Update to the bulletin. Uh, the youth um, are not meeting at 5 today, as it says in here. They're having beach day, and they're meeting at 1130 to go to the beach. So hope you all brought your bathing suits, and have fun. That's great. So. You can have a piece of art, which is a shingle that was installed on the belfry of Ann Street United Methodist Church in 1893. And if you would like to have this piece of church history with the image of our church etched on it, you can send an email to the office at Ann Street United Methodist Church org, and we're asking for a $25 donation. And they're in the church office at this time. Today after worship, we have our session at 1115, leaving the United Methodist Church in the fellowship hall. And so be sure to stay after that, after the service for that meeting. Tuesday, Pastor Taylor's Bible study will meet in the fellowship hall at 1030. And there will be a blood drive on October 3rd in the fellowship hall. And now may we all stand for the call to worship. Is God not in Zion? Is there no ruler to lead us? Search for the Lord, for God waits where we least expect it. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no healer to help us? Cry out to the Lord, for God hears our pleas. Is there no hope left to be found? Is there nowhere to turn? Place your trust in the Lord, whose compassion comes speedily to meet us. Come worship the one who hears our pleas. We will enter God's gates with hope and thank you. And now may we extend the love and the grace of the Lord to each other as we have our passing of the peace. All right.
And now we look to the magic wall as Julia Rowe Johnson brings to us the children's message. Good morning. Welcome to the children's sermon. Today we are going to be in the book of Jeremiah. And this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Now, in this book of the Bible, the Israelites, God's people, have been conquered, and they are living in exile, which means they were pushed out of their home by a group of people that took over where they live and made them go with them to a new place, and they're meeting new people and different people in a different language and different food, and they feel very scared, and they really want to go home, and they're asking God, when do we get to go home? When do we get to go back to where we came from? And God is telling them a whole lot of very encouraging things. And he tells them in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to give you a future. Plans for hope. Plans for you to prosper. Now, if I were in a foreign place with new things and I didn't know anyone except my own family, a different language, a different house, these words would be very comforting to me. And I had a really good way that I thought that maybe I could show this for you. Because not only does God have a plan for the ancient Israelites' life, he has a plan for our lives. And so today I have something really cool in my hand. If you found something wrapped up like this, you might open it, you might think it's a map. And it is. So this is my map, and in the middle we have God's heart, and around the map we have some challenges. We have a big tree right here that we got to get through. We have a huge mountain at the bottom. We have some waves and an ocean, and we have to get through these challenges to get to God's heart or to get to the center of the map, which I'm using to illustrate God's heart. Well, I have all these little purple paths. And as you can see, they actually go through or around the really big obstacles. And that's kind of how it is with God. Now, we can't avoid every obstacle or challenge that we face in life, but it is really comforting to know that God has a plan. And a lot of times, His plan helps us get through challenges, but it always leads to God's heart. So even if you have a straight path like this one, or you have a path that goes through something really tough like this tree, or you have a path that kind of curves, isn't quite straight. They all lead to God's heart. And those are what the words of Jeremiah remind us and encourage us today, that no matter what is going on in our lives, we can remember that God has a plan for our lives and it is always to lead us back to his heart. All right, will you guys join me in prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for having a plan for our lives. Help us to follow you, whether the path is easy or hard. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you have a great week. From Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 30. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who, are, who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For, whom, for those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, in order that He might be the firstborn within a large family, and those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. 
And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Thank you so much, William. And uh, before I read the scripture, I'd like to mention this is a, uh, I'm doing a, a little something different today and next week. I'm going off lectionary, which is uh, off the schedule of usual text, and doing a couple of sermons on passages that are sort of favorites, favorites of a lot of folks. And, um, and I, I'm going to hopefully present to you how they might not mean exactly what you think they mean, but I'm going to tell you that they mean something better than what you might have thought they meant. So, so uh, it's a little two-part mini-series. It's not part one and part two, you, you know. Though I hope you come back next week. It's not. Uh, it's not a. It's not that kind of a thing. But um, so that's uh, the first one. Um, some of you have um, seen the movie Princess Bride, and you remember there's a character in there who. Uh, keeps using the word inconceivable. Does that sound familiar to you? Um, and uh, there's a friend of his who says, I do not think that word means what you think it means. And, um, and uh, this is a bit of, uh, I do not think that verse means what you think it means. So we're going to find something uh, wonderful here, I know. Um, be open to the idea that what you have heard from a, this verse of particularly Jeremiah 29, 11, which I'll read uh, in a moment, uh, is very popular, but when we really pull back the layers, we find it has more to say to us than we thought. Okay, on with the reading. Jeremiah 29, 4 through 14. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. You hear that? Seek the welfare of the city in which I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to your dreams that you dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord." Ouch, right? All right. Then comes verse 10 and following. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. 70 years. Then, then we have the verse that's so favorite. For I surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord's Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. No doubt you've heard that verse. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I have sent you into exile. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So there's this verse. You heard it, verse 11. Uh, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. It's a famous verse often put into thinking of you cards. <laughs> you know, and often sort of embroidered and, and hung up on the wall. It, you know, I'm not going to ask you to like say anything, but just it, does, if, if this verse uh, is familiar, if, you, if this is kind of one of those you've heard a lot before, nod your head or raise your hand or something. Am I getting, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, all right, okay, you with me. Now, on the surface, it sounds like, if you just hear the verse by itself, it sounds like God's saying, hey, I've got this, 
It doesn't make sense now. Things are hard, but you know what? I've got something better for you. And soon, 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 I'm going to make everything right. Now, who doesn't want to hear that? I mean, that's, that is good news. And, and God does say that God is going to bring about a day when the Israelites will come back to Jerusalem. It's going to happen. I'm not going to tell you that it's, God's not going to help. He's saying he is. But in this verse, God was telling the people there would be a better day, but God was telling them that it, did you catch this? It wasn't going to happen real soon and even in their lifetime. They might go through their whole life and not see everything work out the way they'd hoped. But their children and their grandchildren might. And the other thing that he's talking about here too is when he says, I know the plans I have for you, I don't, my Hebrew is, is really, I mean, my Greek is rusty. My Hebrew is like, like a bucket that won't hold water. I mean, it's got holes in it. And so, but, but I know this, the you is something like a plural. I know the plans I have for y'all. That's why I came up with that sermon title, right? It's not a personal little, like, make you feel better today verse. It's talking to the people. He's talking to everybody, you know, the whole national situation thing. So the deeper we go in here, the more we learn. Now, chapter 29 is a long letter from Jeremiah to the Israelites, who, as you know, have been deported into Babylon. Or they're in exile they're enslaved, if you will, sort of. They're in servitude, that kind of thing. The message from the letter of Jeremiah, if you read all of it, is that the Israelites should, for now, settle down and accept what has happened. They shouldn't get all hyped up, if you will, on a promise that God was going to bring them out of Babylon tomorrow after lunch. Okay? Jeremiah even tells them, to accept their lot in Babylon. I, I, I'm, if you got a problem with it, take it up with the Scripture. It's, <laughs> it, it's hard. It's hard to hear that. But it's right there. I mean, he said, this is a time that God has brought them into, and the first thing they're going to have to do is acknowledge that it's rough right now, and they're going to have to live with it. So in verse 5, we've got this whole part. I made sure to... To, to throw in there about building houses and living in them, planting gardens and eating what they produ produce, taking wives and sons and daughters and having grandchildren. Does that sound like people who are going to leave the day after tomorrow? No. He's telling them to settle down and make something good out of the bad situation they're in. Not only that, but he tells them to seek the welfare of Babylon while they're there because they're going to be there a while. And what's good, you know, for, for the city, for others, for the people, will be good for them. Just bear with it, bear through it. Then God tells them about certain prophets, God says, who were rising up and telling the people to get ready to leave Babylon. Oh, he, there were people who would say things like, you know, if you just trust and, and pray hard enough, uh, we're going to get delivered from this right away, and it's just going to happen. It's going to be great, you know. Giving them sort of what we might today call a positive thinking, positive, uh, you know, affirmation, or sort of a name it and claim it. You know, if you say it enough and just believe it enough, then it's going to happen or something like that. But God calls out some people like this. Do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not listen to your dreams that you dream, for it is a lie. They are prophesying it to you in my name. I did not send them. Ouch. <laughs> not only is God warning against them, but God is saying the opposite. These prophets are saying that things are going to get better right away. But God's saying, well, you should settle down and accept your situation. Now, okay, we've got that. So now hear verse 11 one more time in the context in which it was 
given. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. So I take the risk of kind of bursting your bubble about that verse, right? I sound a little bit like a negative Nancy, you know, saying, well, yeah, things are going to get better, but not now. Well, who wants to hear that? That's, that's not it. That's not, that's not a feel-good message. Well, sometimes we have to lose something if we want to gain something greater. And here's where I want to replace what you may have thought with what the verse is really saying. And you may find it's, it's, it's more life-giving to you than what you first thought it said. You see, the idea is that things, that things are going to get better real soon and God just wants to sweep away all your problems is, is a hope. But sometimes it's kind of a cheap hope. Let me say that again. It's, sometimes it's kind of a cheap hope, you know? That, that, that God is just... It almost sort of paints God like a genie in a bottle ready to come out and grant your wishes. And that's not how, that's not how God's portrayed in this, in this chapter, right? You, if you want to know that God is going to take care of you, then read the next three chapters of Jeremiah. And, you, and we're not going to read them here today. You, that's your homework. <laughs> but that's where the promise is, where Jeremiah says, For the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel and Judah, and I will bring them back to the land that I gave to their ancestors, and they shall take possession of it. Does that sound like God has given up on them? Huh? No, no. It doesn't sound like God's given up on them. God is going to take care of them. God is still going to take care of them and fulfill the promise. Did God promise to bring them back to Jerusalem someday? Absolutely. The promise is there. But in the meantime, you have to be patient and wait and trust in the Lord. That's what the prophet Jeremiah is saying. He's saying, don't listen to those other prophets who are saying, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen whenever you're ready. Let's just get ready and let's just all get ready for the, for the day to come. You're to not fall for the quick fix. In fact, at the end of chapter 29, God even calls out one of these prophets by name, a fellow named Shemaiah, and says, Shemaiah led you to trust in a lie. Now, I I haven't gotten, you know, to the point where I've been calling y'all out by name or something for your sins, but, I mean, God's gone to, as we used to say in church, God's gone to, to meddling a little bit here, huh? He's calling them out. So how do you translate this into what you do when you go out of here today. You got a lot of stuff about, you know, Israel and Babylon and all this kind of stuff. What is this going to mean for you and me? Does it mean just grin and bear it? Uh, Does it mean you're kind of cast off on your own and to do the best you can? Let me tell you what it means for me when I'm encountering people in ministry, but also just as a as a follower of Jesus, like you are. And then you, you see if the Holy Spirit helps you kind of think about it that way and think of what it means for you. For example, when I encounter someone who is suffering, I give them words of hope. Because God gave us words of hope in the Bible for sure. We just heard them. I remind them that God has their best in mind, that what they're going through is hard, and God knows how hard it is, that God knows what they're going through. I tell them that God is going to be with them no matter what. No matter how this thing turns out, God is going to be with you. I have faith that God will take care of them. It's not a lack of faith that Jeremiah is showing here. I know God will take care of them no matter what that looks like. And I let them know that I'll be on the journey with them, but God will always be with them. But what I do not say, I do not say it, God is going to take away your problem if you just believe enough. I don't say, if you'll just have faith, God will fix it and make it better. 
Or if you just have more faith, God's going to make it better. I don't just say, visualize your problem going away, and then it's going to just sort of happen. You know, like there was some book, The Secret or something, that was about that. I think some of y'all probably read it. But you don't have to tell me. I'm telling you. You know, that's what the false prophets say. They peddle a cheap hope. A cheap hope. Meant to just give you a little pick-me-up. You know, everybody likes a little pick-me-up. But then your problem keeps going on, and you have to have some deep, expensive hope that cost God a lot. God paid a price in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Amen? So... God is not going to give you a cheap hope like a kind of get you through your day hope. Although, hey, I'll take all that I can get. I don't know about y'all. Some days, I'll take all of that little, little hope I can get. But this is a big hope. A big hope. That God is going to not just take care of Israel, but take care of us. The book of Revelation talks about a new heaven and a new earth, a new creation. God is going to take care of us. God is going to fix What's wrong in the world? Are you with me? Amen. So what I do not say is God is going to take care of your problem if you just believe enough or just keep talking about it, you know, until it happens. Sort of name it and claim it. Have you ever heard of that? Name and claim it theology. That's what false prophets say. That's cheap hope. They're peddling cheap hope and cheap grace. And most of the time they're selling a book or a video series with it. And that's manipulating people's vulnerable situation to tell them what they want to hear. That's what this Shemaiah guy was doing, apparently. I see it happening even today. So let me tell you what the good news is. Does God win the war against evil in the end? Absolutely. You've read the end of the book. You know how it goes. Does God want what's best for us? Absolutely. Has God gone to extraordinary lengths to save us from sin and from ourselves? Yes, indeed. I know God didn't go to all the trouble of losing his son or raising him from the dead just to give up on us now. Does God deliver us from trouble and heal our brokenness? You better believe it. Absolutely. I see it all the time. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. But I want to challenge you today to trust God enough in your hard time to be like the Israelites in Babylon. To not look for cheap hope by not looking for the nearest escape hatch from every problem. By carrying on to some degree with the trusting God with a little bit of that British stiff upper lip kind of a thing. But in faith. By trusting God to take care of you, not just when things are good, but when things are bad, especially when things are really bad. That's the measure of faith and trust. Not what you do when things are good and easy, but how you persevere when things are hard. Because you really believe that God has, to quote Jeremiah and God, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. May it be so for you and for me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. And now may we all stand for our hymn of response, 417.
What a song of faith today. Bless you. All right. Uh, we are praying today for many people and situations. Uh, we want to remember the family of Sue Edmondson, uh, and the service was yesterday, and the family was very appreciative of your support and love. I was told this morning that Tom Adams fell and broke his hip, so we need to I'll look into that. Um, I was also uh, heard from Linda Chadwick that she's had some um, uh, uh, heart-related uh, complications. Uh, so uh, she's getting those looked into and, and taken care of. So let's remember them. Uh, Linda Hevner one, wants to lift up a praise for new members uh, today and, and all the days that we are uh, continuing to join uh, folks continuing to join the church. Um, Teresa Miller lifts up the family of Keith Moore Sr. We shall pray with you. Uh, and Diane Gagnon um, invites us to pray today for our brothers and sisters at First United Methodist Church as they uh, uh, consider disaffiliation uh, today, uh, vote today. Evie, Evie Johnson, Evie, you're very sweet to lift up a prayer for Shannon Mullins as he battles COVID. Uh, we have a couple other people with COVID too. Um, the Stanleys, I believe, have COVID, and John McLeod has had COVID. But he's, he, I talked to him yesterday, and he is on the mend there too. Um, and Anna Willis lifts up Tom and Jean Adams as well too. So we need to come alongside them, and we shall. Uh, Sarah is faithful to uh, bring us the online. My, they, the online friends are, are uh, sharing many important prayers with us. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I have a show uh, Cheryl Young is uh, sharing family of Dr. Is that Rave? Okay, and his wife Joy for the loss of their daughter. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Edith uh, Styron is praying for those with COVID, and, and bless her. Uh, we're praying for you, Edith, too, and all that you're going through. And, and Sheila McClung um, lifts up prayer for her brother-in-law who has stage 4 cancer and is in hospice care. Sheila, definitely we pray with you. Uh, Will uh, Pierce uh, lifts up prayers for safe travels. Will and Ron uh, lift up prayers for safe travels. As you can see, Will is um, uh, not here today, uh, and uh, Beth is filling in uh, quite, quite uh, wonderfully, and we thank you for doing that. Um, Cynthia Downham, uh, uh, safe travels for Will and Ron. Uh, a prayer for uh, Teddy on the soundboard. Uh, Teddy is, uh, as it was written on Facebook, in Facebook language, uh, Teddy is flying solo, and he is rocking it. <laughs> is that Kayla, maybe? I should probably Kayla. Yeah. Um, the, um, so prayers of healing for Lindsay uh, Allen. Um, also prayers of uh, encouragement and healing for Samantha Simmons, our communication specialist. Um, Samantha is, uh, has a uh, spinal fluid uh, leak, and she's been in and out of the hospital this week. And, um, but the, she's in uh, New Bern. And the doctors are hoping it will close up on its on its own, but if not, they'll need to uh, to operate. So let's uh, uh, pray for her uh, at this time. Um, Susan Yearsley uh, also lifts up safe travels for Will and Ron. Very thoughtful. Uh, Tommy Williams, uh, uh, his sister-in-law Eliza Williams, is cancer has returned. So so Tommy and family, we want to join with you in prayer. Uh, and Keith Lambert, Keith and Willie, um, Keith's brother Don Balcom's uh, stomach cancer is uh, certainly in our prayers. Uh, so we won't spin the camera around and all wave to the online audience, but uh, the online congregation. But they're very active and very much with us from all over the place uh, today and every Sunday. So we're glad. Yesterday the internet went down, so we might not have been able to uh, so to stream. So we're glad we can. Barbara. Oh, dear. I'm sorry we missed that. Dorothy Johnson. Thank you. And, uh, okay. Thank you. All right. 
All right. Well, let us go to God together as a people of prayer. Oh God, we are reminded today of the many ways in which we need you. We know that there are trials and tribulations that we face in this life, and we've spoken of many today going on among our, our family and our church family. And, um, and we pray that you will give us your hope. We know that you give us hope for tomorrow, uh, but let it be hope for tomorrow and the next day and the next day and for all time until that day when you shall come. Uh, Lord, we, we offer up the, the needs and the people and we ask that you would help us to develop a, a strong hope, a hope founded on your promises, a hope uh, that is not fleeting but uh, secure and stands with us. So look upon these, your, sister, your, your daughters and sons, with, with favor, with love, and care for them in every way. In the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Congregation, will you turn to page 33 in your hymnal, please? And I invite those who are joining today to come forward and join me at the rail. <clears throat> Let me let me get that's okay. Let me give you these for both families and all the certificates and everything. Okay, all right, folks. Uh, now get get with your yeah, <laughs> or I'll get I'll get confused. I'll be baptized. Okay, now here we are. Here we are. Okay, now you may recognize uh, that uh, Chris Christopher Paul Moore, who I introduced to you for joining, is uh, the brother of. Um, Megan Moore Rapp, and then, uh, of course, we also introduced Daniel Rapp Sr. Uh, and her husband, and, of course, Jesse Hunnings Moore, uh, Christopher's wife, and uh, their families. Uh, on the Moore side, this is the Moores over here, we have Julia and Rand. And on the Rapp side, we have Molly and Daniel Jr. Right. So uh, I introduce to you these uh, sisters and brothers for baptism and for uh, rece reception into the church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts through the sacrament of baptism and God's holy church. And we are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And I'll be asking some questions, and I'm asking you adults to answer for yourselves and for your children. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example 
they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. All right. All right, congregation, at the top of page 35, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these children with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God, faithful in their service to others. We pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Children, this is one of my favorite parts. Watch this. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth life and light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the ones who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. We'll have the Moore family. Okay. All right. Julia, are you ready? You know what? And I'll do Ram last. How about that? Okay. Because I think he might wake up and be surprised. <laughs> so, Julia, this is your chance and your time to be baptized. You, you want to hold that in case you get kind of wet and stuff? Okay. Here you are, sweetheart. I'll put some water on your forehead. Julia Moore, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Man, you're wonderful. You can dry off. That's right. That's right. Okay, who wants to go next? Daniel, you go next? Or Molly? Molly, come on over here, sweetheart. Good job. Good job. Okay. Molly Rapp, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, here's your towel. I almost forgot. Okay. There you go. Beautiful. Come on, brother. You're ready. <clears throat> Good job. Good job. Here's your towel. You want that? Kind of helps, though. Okay. It's just just to dry off. There. Daniel Habit Rapp Jr., I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Very brave. Big, big boys and girls. Okay, thank you. And Rand. Okay. Hey, Rand. Look, I have some, I have a bowl of water. Hey. All right. <laughs> you turn and face them, and I'm going to baptize them. Rand. Okay. All right. Here, let me get you a towel. Here, Daddy. Here's a towel. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to put some water on your forehead. See the water? Okay. All right. All right. Rand Moore, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, children would and and dad, would you walk like to walk around with me on a little parade? Would you like to do a little parade? Okay, let me come down here with you. You want to take? If, moms and dads can come too. You want moms and dads to come? That's fine. If you're done with it, I'll just take. Okay. I gotta we'll dry my hand off. Okay, you're good. Okay, okay. Let's go around and Miss um, Candace. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> I know you weren't tall, but I didn't think you got, you know, sure. Let's go around and, and sing Jesus Loves Me and go see our friends. Ready? <clears throat> Look, there's one of our friends now. See Freya? Right, so sells me so little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus. Let's wave like we do in a parade. Wave like you do in a parade. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. One more time. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. Wave. We are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Did you like that? Wasn't that fun? <clears throat> That was neat, right? Okay. We're now going to conclude uh, with page 38. A couple of questions for the grown-ups here. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by, and we have five of them, don't we, folks? Prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. I will. Great. They've studied their lines. They know. That. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care on page 38. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified in Jesus Christ. 
the God of all grace who has called you to eternal glory, establish you and strengthen you. Establish and strengthen all of you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Sorry, my hand's cold now. It's a little wet. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all. And uh, thank you. You can have your seats. And I know you all will want to greet them. And I know Rachel will want to take pictures uh, since Samantha isn't here today. So, right. Thank you, Rachel. I know. Yes, Rachel's like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Of course, Pastor Taylor, whatever you say. <clears throat> All right. We are so joyful. Let's go on to our offering. Thank you, William. And now we come to the place in the service where we give back unto the Lord our gifts and our offering. And you can give online to Ann Street, United Methodist Church dot org slash give, or you can mail it into 417 Ann Street for the Usher Suites number 20.
good gift, you call us to be wise with the true riches of your kingdom. May this offering show such wisdom that having been found faithful in a little, you will trust us with to be faithful in much. We offer you these gifts in gratitude for your love that they may be that they may bring healing and light to all who need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our final hymn, 98. God has done great things, and God will continue to do great things. Thanks be to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who has brought us into a time of worship, made disciples among us, and sends us forth to do the same. Amen.